I think I'm starting to limit out to about as fast as I can make this thing go. It has two speeds now. As soon as it sees an error, which is caused by a corner, it slows down. Anytime the error goes low, i.e. on a straight, it speeds up. So it can handle better speeds on the straights. All right, let's look how I constructed the robot. Nearly all the parts are just from a standard MBOT Ranger kit. The line following sensor is a make block line follower array and it is made by make block. Instead of using the battery that came with it, what I've done is I've used 11 milliamp hour two cell LiPo hobby battery. And always when I run these things, I always just put a hobby uh, battery monitor on it because if you run these totally flat, they can catch fire when you try to charge them the next time. So this is just your, your cheap $2 off eBay um, battery monitor and it sounds an alarm when the battery's starting to get low that tells you to stop and go and charge your batteries. And I just made up a little adapter myself, but you can also buy those off eBay. Just a couple of quick notes on the design of the robot. A couple of things I've done is I've tried to make the robot as light as possible. That's also one of my reasons for choosing that such a small little battery there was helped to keep weight down. I found when I had a heavier robot, when it was coming into the line and doing sudden tight turns, the weight of it would cause it to slide out and would skid off the line and I was losing traction. So I tried to go as light as possible. The other thing I tried to do is I tried to keep as much weight directly around the pivot point where it turns because that allows it to turn much easier. The further the weight spread out, the harder it is to turn. Originally I had all the weight right over the pivot point, but I found that when it was driving along, that would cause it to start doing really. So I did move my weight just a little bit forward of the um, of the pivot point. Um, I'll, you'll see in the construction, I arranged the motors so they're nice and close together to, to bring it all in there rather than the standard make block type design where the motors are actually further apart. So here's the assembly for the front sensor away. It's just a small vertical bar with a T-bar on the back of it. I put the cable on now because later on it's too hard to get it on. All right, so that's the front assembly. Okay, here's the center assembly that holds the motors together. So I just got the two motors, put that uh, T-bar that comes with it on, and I just simply screwed it down with the tall um, standoffs that come standard with um, the MBOT Ranger. So all just standard parts here, that's the center. And here's the center assembly that just joins those two together. And it's just simply the long bar. And I just put it in that set of holes there. I put the bit sideways like that so the cable can fit through there. Just a little drag wheel on the bottom. And I face him backwards as well so that he's not ramming into where the, um, the cable is. All right, so that's the center section there. So here we have the three um, bits assembled together. You can see I've just pushed that up as far as I can and put two bolts to there. Then I push that on there to it's just short of the two bolts and put two bolts in there. All right, so I've just put four bolts in to hold those two sections together. And I've just bolted that plate on the top. You notice that more sticks out one side than the other. I've chosen to stick it out that way because I plug into that side there. So I've just offset it a little bit to this side because I'm gonna plug in that side there, okay? So it's just gonna offset like that. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to put two of these little spaces here. So when that sits down, it all sits nice and flat above these here. And then I'm just going to bolt him on. Okay, I've just simply bolted the top down and wired everything up. I personally ran my um, line follower sensor into port 10, but you can put in any port you want. Obviously, the motor port for this side goes to the motor on this side. The motor port from that side goes to the motor port on the other side. And one other little thing I did... I just put a couple of rubber, ba uh, rubber bands there on a crisscross because so I'm just going to lift those rubber bands up and shove my battery underneath them and the rubber bands are there just to hold my battery still. All right, and that's the robot finished. Okay, here's my code I used that was running on the robot when you were watching it. I have commented everything out there. The red blocks you see there are my own custom extensions. I will put a link in the description to where you can download those from. I think I'm starting to limit out to about as fast as I can make this thing go. It has two speeds now. As soon as it sees an error, which is caused by a corner, it slows down. Anytime the error goes low, i.e. on a straight, it speeds up. So it can handle better speeds on the straights. 
there it's going slow. See so speeds up a little bit there for the straights. Speeds up even a little bit on those big corners. And slows down for the wiggly bits. And that's just done via the error. Whenever it gets a big error on the outside lights, it slows down. Anytime it's on the inside lights, it accelerates and speeds up to a maximum speed. I think this is about as quick as this thing's going to go.